everybody and welcome to another episode of Random Considerations. In this episode I'm going to make a stuffed bell pepper recipe. Um, I do have a recipe already on my website but the, the thing about stuffed bell peppers is that there's no like set in stone way to make it so this might be a slight variation from that. Um, but I'll also put a link to that down in the description below. In this uh, episode I just kind of went to the store found some ingredients that I thought sounded good in the bell peppers and along with some things that I've already got and so that's what this is going to be. start getting your peppers ready you're going to want to pre uh, preheat your oven to 350 because you're going to roast the peppers to kind of get them to break up a little bit so i bought four green bell peppers you can buy like colored bell peppers if you want a little pop of color but i find that because the green bell peppers tend to be cheaper and i don't think it necessarily changes the flavor much i just buy the green bell peppers but i bought four there's only two of us so what i'm going to do today is I'm actually going to prep a set of two for future use, um, get it all prepped in the pan, wrap it up, and put it in the deep freeze for another night, and then set the other set is going to be for dinner tonight. The first thing you want to do is you want to prep your peppers. So what I do is I'm going to take the top and core out of it, like so. It's kind of like carving a pumpkin. portion should come out fairly easily. And then I'll usually just, I mean I've seen it, people use the spoon for this, but I usually just get in there with my hands to take the little white fluffy looking ribs out of it. And this is just to make room in the pepper. And you're going to do this with all four of your peppers. Now that we've got the holes cut open in our peppers, we're going to stick them in the oven and I just stick them right on the rack so that they can roast a bit. And you'll kind of know when they're roasted because the skins will kind of bubble up a bit. Um, you might get a few black spots here and there, but it's not a big deal. Uh, mostly you're just going to see the skins bubbling up a bit and it'll start to smell very peppery fragrant. <laughs> compost your stuff. Don't forget to I uh, use this container to put all of your leftover pieces that you're not going to use like these little core pieces in your compost bin. So now we're going to chop up our tomatoes. Which I think I'll I've got three here. I don't know if I'll need all three. I use this smaller knife. I think I can use a bigger knife for the tomatoes. And this is going to go in the stuffing. So we're just going to dice up the tomatoes. You can also buy a can of diced tomatoes if you want, but especially if you're going to be prepping it ahead of time and sticking it in the freezer, it probably doesn't make too much of a difference, but canned tomatoes tend to sometimes have salt. Sometimes they don't. It depends on the brand and it depends on how it's packaged, but... I don't know, I thought it'd give a nice fresher flavor to use some fresh tomatoes. That might be sufficient. I do have a tendency to make more stuffing than there is bell pepper, which is all the more reason that I'm making a set for later. But since I'm doing that, I'll probably still overmake it because I've got that in my head. So we'll see what happens. Okay. 
looking at it, it looks like two tomatoes should be more than enough for the amount of stuffing we're making. So we'll just do the two tomatoes, leave the third one for later. Now I will cut up the onion and I'll probably cut up the whole thing because I'm going to be using it both in the stuffing and then also in the uh, guacamole topping that I'm going to be making while this, while the peppers cook. But I don't know, it's a pretty big onion. I might only do half of it. We'll start with half. We're going to dice the onions as well. Ooh. Ooh, making me cry. You know it's a good onion if it makes you cry. So much crying. Makes it difficult to see. Ooh. Okay, so depending on what other uh, things you're putting in your stuffed bell peppers, you could just leave them raw like this and put them in the filling. You can saute them to kind of get them a little more translucent, maybe in some olive oil. What I'm going to do is, since I'm going to be using ground pepper in this recipe, I'm actually going to cook this with the ground pepper. So I'm just going to stick these in here with the ground pepper. Ground, the ground meat, yes. Thank you. Been, have I been saying pepper the whole time? It's ground beef. Ground pepper will be involved too at some point, I'm sure, but this is ground beef. I'm going to set this aside. It's going to go, part of it anyway, is going to go in the guacamole. But I'm going to make that while the peppers are cooking in a minute. The next thing I'm going to add is pinto beans. Uh, you can make them yourself, but I'm on a schedule here, so I just bought a can of pinto beans. So I'm just going to open up the can. Come in water. I don't want to put the water in the stuffing, so with the lid closed like this, I'm going to dump the water off into the sink. So now that I've got the water emptied out of it, I'm just going to dump the whole can into the bowl with the tomatoes. For a little bit of flavor, I'm going to add in some juice from a lime. In this case, it's a key lime. That's what they have in the store. It tends to be a little sweeter than regular limes, I think. It could be me. And I do have like a, a citrus thing, but I see no reason to get it all dirty. So I'm just going to squeeze it into my hand and then keep my other hand underneath it to catch any seeds, which it doesn't look like there's seeds in this, but if there are, I'll catch them. So if you roll it around on the cutting board beforehand, before cutting it open, it'll squeeze a lot better, otherwise it's kind of t hard to squeeze to get it started, which I didn't do that, but once you kind of get it going, either way it'll work. Don't forget to put your your uh, lime peels in the compost bucket. We're going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper to the mixture. Pepper. Salt. Usually I pinch it in, but I got juice all over my fingers, so we're just going to shake it in. That should be sufficient. So that's all we're going to do here now. We're going to go ahead and prepare the ground beef as opposed to the ground peppers. And we're also going to prepare the quinoa. I use quinoa instead of rice in this recipe. So here's the onions we chopped up earlier in the ground beef. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. For the quinoa, 
I'm basically starting out with a half a cup of actual quinoa and I'm going to cook it in a cup of chicken stock. Now you can just use regular water, but I'm doing a half cup of quinoa to one cup of chicken stock. And they actually will sell one cup size things of chicken stock at the chicken stock at the store it turns out. Which I never knew that. This must be a new thing. It pours a little slower than a measuring cup. And you'll want to cover it while it cooks so that the moisture doesn't evaporate into the air because you're going to need that whole cup of liquid to hydrate that quinoa. finish preparing the ground beef with the onions. You can either attempt to like drain the fat, the liquid at the bottom is actually fat so you could just drain this out into the trash can. Um, it's, it's animal fat so you don't want to really put it down the sink because animal fat cools into a solid form which clogs drains, it's no good. So you'd want to do it into a trash can. And I will do that in a minute but I find it easier to just kind of scoop out the meat out of the pan and I'm going to add it to the mixture. waiting for the quinoa to finish up so I'm just going to kind of mix this in just to kind of get a look at it. And this is already quite a bit of filling. That's okay. I find that if I still over make the stuffing then I just kind of put it around. I'll stuff the peppers with it and then I'll put whatever's left around the peppers just on the outside. Typically the honey will just chop it all up and on his plate anyway before he even starts eating it so it all goes in the same. So I was kind of going off of, loosely off of the stuffed bell pepper recipe that I have on my website, which I came up with when I was on this candida cleanse, which I've mentioned in previous videos. And part of that cleanse meant with no dairy and no wheat products and so on. Um, so I almost forgot that I'm not on that cleanse at the moment. And I feel like this could stand to have some cheese. So I do have some sharp, shredded, sharp, I do have some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Say that 10 times fast. I'll actually add this in right before I go to stuff the peppers because it's still kind of hot. So if I put the cheese in now, it's going to melt the cheese. Then I'm not ready for it to melt the cheese yet. Otherwise, it'll kind of clump up in one chunk, and that's no good. We want it to be well mixed in. Um, this is normally, I would probably do more cheese than what's in here. There's only about maybe a cup in there. But that's okay. So I just took the bell peppers out of the oven and I got them a little bit more done than I normally would do. Um, it's just part of because we're filming it and it's hard to get the timing right. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily need to get yours quite this done. But you do want the skin to kind of be a little wrinkly like this. And these will still be fine. They're not burnt or anything. They're just more done than I normally do. And if you look at the stuffed bell pepper recipe I have on the website, it gives you a much better idea of the, the doneness that I generally try to do with my peppers. So now that the quinoa is done, pretty well done. There's a little bit of residual chicken stock, but not too much. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to this mixture. And that should pretty much cover it as far as everything that's going to go into the stuffing. And we're just going to get it all mixed in together. Now we'll go ahead and add that cheese in we were talking about. Just gonna dump the whole pack in. 
the whole remainder of the bag, I should say, because there's only maybe about a cup left in the bag. So I guess about a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. But again, it's up to your taste, so if you want to put a whole bag, well, that's just up to you. Now we're just going to start scooping our stuffing into our peppers, and we want to get them as stuffed in there as we possibly can. So you kind of want to mush it around and get it in every little crevice you can. Because I pre-roasted the peppers and it basically made the pepper softer so it actually the peppers kind of act more like a piece of fabric as far as for conforming around the stuffing as opposed to if you try to put it in there while the uh, peppers are still cold and raw it's not going to budge and then you possibly bust the pepper. So they're all stuffed, and as per usual, I ended up with about a half of whatever I made still left. So like I said before, I just kind of scoop it around the bottom, around the bottom of the peppers. And I'll try to do half and half with each pan. So as I said before, one of the pans is for tonight, and then the other pan is going to be for, the, uh, for another night. And probably this little pan, since it's, it'll take up smaller space in the freezer. I'll just scoop what's left kind of around the bottom ish. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one in the oven, still on 350. I didn't turn it off from when we were roasting them. And it's just a matter of getting all of the flavors to melt together since most everything, including the peppers, are already cooked. It's just a matter of heating it a little bit longer, just long enough to whip up our guac real quick and to wrap up this other one. super fancy guacamole just it's gonna be kind of as a topper so I actually happen to have have some cilantro growing wild out in the yard um, I used to have cilantro in my garden or where, where my garden used to be several years ago and it still comes back every once in a while as a wild cilantro this is about everything that was on it so it, the thing about wild cilantro is the leaves are not as prolific as it is when it's grown for its purpose um, but that's okay. It's still cilantro. So it's just going to basically be chopped cilantro, a chopped tomato, a pureed avocado, a little more lime juice, and not even this much onion, just a little bit more onion. I'm going to put it all in this little bowl. I'm going to start out with the avocado. Now, avocados, for those that don't know, pretty easy, they're very soft in the middle. I will pretty much go around in a circle and then peel them off, just like that. And then to get the core out, they're very slippery, you can't just really pluck them out very well. If you want to actually try to grow an av avocado plant, you kind of want to try to do that, but I'm not going to worry about that. The trick that I learned is you take your knife, whack it, and pluck it out. But some, you gotta get it lined up right. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This is a very tiny pit. There we go. Poke it out. That helped. And then I'm just gonna use a spoon that I used to scoop out the filling got a little quinoa left on it, but that's no big deal. And then just kind of pull it around the bottom of the pit, and you scoop it out of the skin, just like that. 
can take this little piece of stem off too. That's one half. And there's the other half. Be sure to put your skins and your pits in your compost. And I think I'll just use a fork to mush this up. Which takes a little... It's an oily fruit, so it takes a little effort to get it going without scooping it out onto the floor. in a minute. Chop up this tomato. It may be more tomato than anything else. All the bigger avocados were green still, so I had to get the little one. I probably should have gotten two of them, but oh well. That should be enough of that. Cilantro. I like big chunks of cilantro, and it's up to you if you want cilantro at all. I know cilantro has a love-hate, you either love it or you hate it kind of a deal. I happen to love it. Some people think it tastes like dish soap or something. There's a scientific reasoning behind that apparently, but I don't know. I don't remember what that was all about. And what I didn't do before, rolling the lime on the cutting board. Before I cut it. And these didn't have seeds, so I'm just going to squeeze them right on in. Citrus juicer it is. Put it in there with the little holes facing down. And squeeze. Much quicker work of that. Put the other one in and squeeze. There we go. Maybe a little salt and a little pepper. Hmm, that was probably more than necessary. A little pepper. Not much in there, so it doesn't need much more than that. Mm, you know, I don't think I'm going to add the onion. I don't think it needs it. The honey says it does need onion, so... Fine. So I'll cut up a little bit of onion. Probably that's enough. I was just trying to get out of crying. So that is the guacamole. Mm. They're really good. Mm. Everything is just better with a ground beef. I don't care what they tell you. So that's going to be the end of this episode. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, stuffed bell peppers, you can really kind of do whatever you want with them. This could give you a good starting point. So I hope you try it and I hope you enjoy it. And go ahead and let me know of any alternative um, options that you like to do in your stuffed bell pepper recipes uh, down in the comments below. So that's going to be it. Um, if you like this episode, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more episodes of Random Considerations, go ahead and click subscribe down below. If you would like to follow me on so different forms of social media, everything that I do is down linked down below. And then if also, if you're into genealogy, I have a genealogy channel called Monkey in My Tree, and that's also linked down below. And everything all comes together on my website, randomconsiderations.com. 
So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. So part of why I chose this particular location for my pond has to do with one, the faucet and water hose for the backyard is in this area. So if there's any dripping coming from uh, the spout or any excess water coming off of the hose, it'll all collect in this rock area and descend down into the pond. Now this rock area isn't part, it is part of the pond. The pond liner goes all the way up to the house, but the actual pond doesn't actually begin to until about here where these, uh, the water mint is, which I'll go into that in a minute. Um, and the reason for that is I didn't want the pond to 